Well, good morning, everyone. It's Thursday. It's April 2nd. And what do I always say? Let's get into it right now. I wanted to wait an extra few minutes to do today's report. It's 8.47. The market's going to open up in about, uh, let's see here, 43 minutes. But I wanted to wait for the employment report that comes out an hour before the opening bell. And boy, oh boy. Wow, what a report. We went from the best numbers in 50 years to the worst numbers in history. I mean, folks, this is bad, but I believe the market's already expecting this. More than 6.6 .6 million Americans applied for unemployment benefits last week, far, far, far exceeding the record high just set last week. A sign that layoffs all are accelerating. Yeah, I, I would say that. The figure for last week is much higher than the previous record of 3.3 million reported for the previous week. The surging layoffs have led many economists to envision as many as 20 million lost jobs by the end of April. I think we're about, I think we're close to 10 million, honestly, because remember, this is from a week before. The unemployment rate could spike to as high as 15% this month above the previous record of 10.8% set during a deep recession, excuse me, in 1982. And I'm not going to read the rest because you guys already know what it looks like. I mean, just to show you the numbers, look at this prior number, actual number. This is bad, 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 bad. I mean, this is bad. Look at this. This is bad, bad, bad. Let's talk about the market a little bit. The market sold off yesterday. We went down. We hit a trout. The market pulled back up, went from the, this is the E-mini S&P. Went from about 2189 all the way to about 2634 building a very strong resistance level there, which means it's a good idea for you guys if you're looking at the E-mini S&P. And if you're looking at the SPY, S-P-Y ETF, just take, just take two zeros off. One is in the hundreds and one is in the thousands. So if you're looking at the SPY, this would be 264. If you're looking at the E-mini S&P, this would be uh, 2,646. Just remove two zeros. One's in thousands, one's in hundreds. And again, these are the resistance levels, 2,650, uh, 2, give or take a few decimals, not a few decimals, a few points, sorry, Depend decimals if you're looking at the SPY. And on a support level, I'm looking at the 2,398-ish, I would even go below that, I would say 2,386-ish level, because if we break this level here, let me just draw it for you. Sometimes it's just easier to draw, even though I'm not an, much of an artist. That's the, that's the resistance area right there. And let me draw the support area for you, which is right here. Oops, my artistic skills are not to be desired. There, there you go, somewhere right around there. That's the channel we're in. If we break this channel to the downside, there is an extremely high likelihood that we will test the bottom. As a matter of fact, even if we don't break this channel over the next day or two, because we're still far from being out of this mess, there's a good chance we're going to break down and break the low. There's just too much data that's unknown, and there's just too much uh, trading action in the market that's not been accounted for. For example, and I don't mean to be a grim reaper. I'm being realistic with you. We don't know how many people are going to die. We don't know how many people are going to recover. We don't know what other countries are going to be infected. We don't know how bad the infections are going to be. We don't know when the vaccine is going to come out. We don't know how effective it's going to be. We d and all of these things are just from the top of my head. I'm sure if I was a scientist or a medical doctor, I would come up with a million better ones. But just common sense logic. Think about this, folks. This is We're still on the defensive. We're not on the offensive. We're on the defensive. We don't know how hard this is going to hit us. How could we assimilate or believe the market is assimilating everything that we don't know? That's an impossibility. And things are not looking better. They're looking worse before they get better. And again, I'm not trying to be a grim reaper. I'm trying to, to be objective here. And remember, there are many different ways to skin this cat. I've shown you dozens of stocks over the last few days making you highs. There's inverse assets. There's tons of way to take advantage of this market if you follow my videos every morning. I, I mean, I've literally been, just the other day, I gave you Teladoc, a stock that, um, it's, a, it's an online um, doctor, medical doctor, where you see via uh, via um, Citrix systems or Zoom, web to meetings um, type of thing where you see them online, where you don't have to come into their office. It's booming right now. The stock is near all-time highs. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm digressing. 
I expect the S&P to stay within this range the next day or two till we get more confirmation. Tomorrow, we have, let me show you the data we have coming out tomorrow. We got employment numbers, we got non-manufacturing uh, non-manufacturing ISM index and the PMI service. The employment data is the biggest one and today's jobless claims is going to kind of put us in a perspective where we will know what to expect. The numbers tomorrow are not going to be pretty. I mean, they are not going to be pretty, not at all. Look at this, ouch, consensus negative 150,000. We're looking at a consensus of negative 1.25 million to 100,000. We're like, we're all over the place. So uh, these numbers are just terrible, 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 terrible. But what are we doing today? Remember, today's Thursday, and Thursday I talk about the worst stocks. The worst stocks on Wall Street, the stocks you should either short if they have a little bounce, or you should just ignore. So we got Royal Caribbeans, we got one Oak, we got department stores, we got petroleum, we got Alliance Data Systems, we got energy companies, we got airlines, and we got Simon Property Group. Remember, I told you to short this stock during turning point December. It's down over 70% while the market's down about 25. One other stock uh, that I'm that I'm really bearish on right now is Nordstrom's. I think Nordstrom's is going to plummet, but any of the stocks on the on this list, Royal Caribbean, and what you want to focus on, you want to you want to focus on trends. You don't want to if you just see one stock in there, that could be a coincidence. But if you see a few stocks, for example, Royal Caribbean, right? And then we see here uh let's see here, Royal Caribbean. Where is the other one? Airlines, cruise ships, Let's see if there's other ones here. Resorts, energy companies. So you could see a pattern here. You could see a pattern of airlines, energy companies, retail stocks. Again, hotels, wind resorts. Wind resorts started going lower and lower and lower. More airlines. You see this? Resorts, airlines, banks, airlines 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 restaurants resorts airlines financial services energy so uh, retail stores those are the main groups the three groups the energy stocks the retailers especially the brick and mortar retailers like macy's right now oh it's terrible so energy stocks brick and mortar retailers restaurant stocks and resorts those are the three Again, we got cruise ships, restaurant stocks, energy companies, and airlines and resorts. Those are the biggest ones, biggest ones, because we see several of them in here. As a matter of fact, some of the air, some of the stocks went up a little higher, but again, none of them are really looking that great. You got Conoco, Phillips, any stocks in the bottom 20 of the weakest stocks in the S&P 500 are fair game right now. The stocks that I would be focused on Personally, I would start looking at the large retailers because Macy's was delisted from the S&P 500 yesterday, and I'm expecting Nordstrom's, Kohl's, and other stocks similar to see similar fate. I don't think large retailers are going to survive this. And energy, I hear that Exxon, it's costing Exxon more to produce oil right now than to sell it. So things are looking bad. So again, cruise ships, resorts, especially in Las Vegas, large brick and mortar department stores, and energy companies. Those are the stocks you either wanna really stay away from or you wanna short if there's a bounce. And here's another tip for you. Don't look for a big bounce. The best ones occur when there's a very little bounce. Let me give you a good example here. Um, there was one I was just looking at the other day. Let me show you this, SPG here. It's going to be interesting to see if the S&P holds up after what happened today. This is a perfect example. Notice we went we went all the way from 139 all the way to to 41 dollars on Simon Property Group and then when we bounced we literally bounced from 42 to 67. So that's a very little bounce. Very little bounce and then again lower. If you see a huge bounce like going all the way up to the 200-day moving average, that's a little too strong. That means that the 
the, the pull down might have been a little too much. It might have it might now be below fair value. But if you see a bounce going from if you see a trade going from 140 to 40, losing a hundred dollars and then gaining twenty five dollars and then bouncing back, that stock is that stock is dead in the water. And by the way, this is the same stock that I recommend that you guys sell. This was my weakest recommended stock during turning point in December. And just so you see, it's the only read or one of the only reads that I see on my bottom list. It is a weak, weak, weak stock, and I think it's gonna be going weaker, SPG. But again, we got the cruise ships, we got energy stocks, we got large department stores, airlines, and resorts. Folks, I got something for you today. I got something really, really, really important for you. Now, this market's on the fritz once again, and we're opening higher today. Usually in a downtrend, when we open higher, we sag lower. And folks, no amount of government stimuli can stop what's coming next. And that's kind of what I was trying to tell you. There's, there's, a, there's, there's, uh, there's something bad on the horizon. But what if I told you? What if I told you you could still be on your way to 24-hour windfalls thanks to Blitz Alert? Folks, there are still buyers out there. There are stocks that are making 52-week highs. There are stocks making 90-day highs. Uh, Teladoc, Netflix, let's see here, Amazon. I'm cheating. I'm looking at my sheet from yesterday. But there are stocks out there that are just going nuts because certain industries are going to be dying off. And certain industries like, like uh, online conferences, for example, medical doctors that you could see online. Again, 24-hour windfalls thanks to Blitz, Blitz Alert. All you have to do is check your phone, place a quick trade, and potentially collect thousands of dollars the very next morning. You're not holding trades 10 years. You're not holding trades 10 days. Literally, overnight, a few days, big winners, potential for triple-digit gains. It's really something else. These, these blitz alerts, they give you 24-hour windfalls, double, triple-digit gains. All you have to do is click, click the link below, follow the link, learn about the strategy. Again, folks, Government is not going to help you here. The Fed is not going to help you here, but Lance will. These blitz alert trades are smoking hot. They are momentum. They, these are trades. You don't see anything coming. Next thing you see, explosive gains and all based on what Lance is going to tell you. You really need to see this for yourself. Check out Lance. Check out blitz alert. Do it now. Click the link below. Get this strategy now. Don't delay. This period that we're going to right now, there are some people who are going to walk away from this in the poorhouse, but some people are going to walk away multimillionaires. And we want you to be the multimillionaire. Every time something like this happens, and this happens once every 100 years, there's opportunity. There's always silver linings. Some industries are going to fall through the cracks, and some are going to explode. And Lance is going to teach you how to do it versus Blitz Alert. He's got it all figured out. Listen to what he's talking about. He's going to teach you how to create 24-hour windfalls, with Blitz Alert. Follow the link snap, follow the link below, learn how to get into it right now. Don't delay, do it now. Your this opportunity that we're having right now, it's not going to be around forever. Do it now, change your life. Talk to you soon. Bye.